Welcome to this video in which we will compute the length of a curve. So given is the function f of x is 5 times cosine hyperbolic x over 5. And as you may recall, this is the shape of a hanging chain. So if I make a sketch, what we have is a horizontal axis, vertical axis. We go from minus 5 up to 5 and then if you would sketch the graph you would find that something that looks approximately like this so this is y equals f of x and f of x is this cosine hyperbolic and what we're being asked is the length of the curve so if you would take the two endpoints of this curve and would stretch it what is the length that you get there in mathematics, this is called the arc length, and the general formula for that is that the length L is the integral from minus 5 up to 5 square root 1 plus the derivative squared dx. In general, this is very hard to compute, and only for very special functions can we compute this integral exactly. And this, the cosine hyperbolic, is one where we can do this. So let's see how this goes. Um, let me get a bit of paper here. So what we are being asked to compute is this L the integral minus 5 up to 5 square root 1 plus f prime squared dx. We have that f of x is 5 times cosine hyperbolic x over 5, which is, by definition, 5 times e to the power x over 5, plus e to the power minus x over 5, and the whole thing divided by 2. And let me rewrite it as 5 over 2 times exponential plus exponential. Because I'm going to be needing the derivative, and that's easy to compute like this, so now we have that f prime x differentiating with respect to x, is 5 over 2, and then we get e to the power x over 5, and with the chain rule, a 1 over 5 plus e to the power minus x over 5, and then with the chain rule times minus 1 over 5, like this. And you see that the 5 apparently drops out, and we get 1 half e to the power x over 5 minus e to the power minus x over 5. Now, in our integral, we have f prime squared plus 1. So let's try and compute that first. So I'm going to compute 1 plus f prime x squared which is 1 plus 1 over 4. e to the power x over 5 squared is going to be e 2x over 5. Then if I compute this thing times this thing, I get e to the power 0, which is 1, and I get that twice, so I have minus 2. And then finally plus e to the power minus 2x over 5. And now something interesting happens because here I have a 1 and here I have 1 over 4 times minus 2 which is minus 2 over 4 minus 1 half. So I can write the whole thing as 1 over 4 e to the power 2x over 5 plus 1 half plus e to the power minus 2x over 5. And um, in the integral, I would like to take the square root of this whole thing. 
So I want to compute the square root of 1 plus f prime squared. And hopefully you see that I can now write this thing. I should put a 1 over 4 here, sorry. Equals. Um, one half e to the power x over five plus one half e to the power minus x over five squared. So you can rewrite it like this. Let me move this a little bit out of the way so you can read the whole expression. So you see that I can write this as a square so if I now take the square root, what we get is what is in between the brackets. So this expression is what we need to integrate from minus 5 up to 5. So let's do that on the next page. So what we get here is that L equals the integral from minus 5 up to 5. And what we now get is a half e to the power x over 5 plus 1 half e to the power minus x over 5 dx. And now we've basically done the most difficult part because this is a standard um, integration. And what we get is as... Uh, an antiderivative, we get 5 over 2 e to the power x over 5, because if I differentiate this, I get precisely what it says here. And the second term is going to give me a minus e to the power minus x over 5, 5 over 2, and this whole thing in between x equals 5, x equals minus 5, so what we get is 5 over 2, and then we have here e minus e to the power minus 1, and then we get minus e to the power minus 1 plus e. And we can write this whole thing together as 5 times e minus e to the power minus 1, and if you like, you can write that as e minus 1 over e. And if we go back to the answers on the very first slide, then you see that apparently the correct answer is option A here. So that concludes this integral. I hope this was all clear and I'll see you in the next video.